Hey folks, Dave here and I like knives. Here to talk to you today about the Kershaw Spleen. This little buddy uh, is coming in with a blade of 2.8 inches, a handle length of 3.8 inches, a blade thickness, stock thickness of 0.09 inches, and a weight of 4.2. And don't worry, we'll come back and cover all of that very, very soon. There's a lot of gold here. There's a lot of garbage, too. Let's get into it. Size comparison time. You can see Rat 2, very similar blade length. Delica, again, with similar blade length. Mini Griptilian, you get the picture. This is not a large knife. More blade length than the pair of three, at least. And interesting matchup where it sits pretty well in the medium of popular budget models. Now, one of the big gold nuggets of this offering is it's not the most important thing about it, but it does color everything else, and that is the price. Uh, this is uh, this is a very budget uh, offering from Kershaw. It has been discontinued. It is still available uh, in most places for about 20 bucks during its run. Uh, I believe that I purchased this for about 20, maybe uh, maybe just a little hair over. Uh, what you know while it was still available in stores but even though it is still a budget knife uh, it there's a lot of good that comes with it um, it's not uncommon for you to hear you know this is only a $30 knife so there's only so much so much you could expect from it that's absolute garbage there's a lot of good here not least of which is kind of it's attention to details it's one of my favorite things so I'll spend some time on it that right there you see is that that's a lock over travel stop what that means is that there is no way for you to push this lock bar this is a assisted action frame lock there's no way for you to push it out of out of line as opposed to something like a pico which right here you can see there's no there's no guard there there's no barrier so theoretically you could take this and shove it to you know third star till morning and bend the frame all out of whack with this there's a protection in there you're not going to be able to do it because of that little disc right there very very cool it's a small detail something that didn't have to be added at this price point and usually isn't but it is here and I like seeing it Another thing is this backspacer, which, again, in this budget of a knife, not something that you always have to do, but it's there. Uh, I believe it's FRN. There's a little bit of texturing involved um, just to help give you a little bit more secure grip. And uh, I, I personally prefer backspacers to a flow-through design uh, just because it gives me a little bit of peace of mind with the with the knife being completely covered and with this one eh, there's a little bit of texture there's a little bit of design there it's not just a straight slab moving on is the stop pin now this is something that Kershaw it feels like in a lot of their budget pieces especially the uh, the assisted opening ones it feels like they have a tendency to do an internal stop pin which is a pin right about there inside the blade as opposed to this one which is outside of the blade. You can see that right there, that little rod going through. The reason that this is a better design, I don't know if it's cheaper, I assume that it is, uh, to do an internal stop pin versus this, um, is that the internal stop pin will get gunked up uh, with, the, with the travel of the blade, whereas this one is completely isolated from the blade. It's completely independent. Uh, not a big deal, but still very cool. Its lockup, being a frame lock, is absolutely above reproach. You can see right there, it's more than 50%. It's, you know, a lot of people don't like their lock, uh, their liner frame locks to be more than 50%, but at whatever this is, whatever percent that is, I don't know, call it an 80, who cares? That thing is solid. There's no blade, uh, no blade wiggle, nothing to that effect. Very, very cool. Secure lockup, always got to love it. One of the other gold nuggets here, and like I said, given its existence on a budget range, makes it all the more impressive, is the chamfering. Obviously, you can't feel this, and I can't really show you, but there, other than the one, 
is not a sharp edge or corner on this whole thing. It is, I mean, it's completely rounded off. This is the, those streaks you can see are from where I tried to strike a fire starter. Uh, but there is not a 90 degree here. It's all rounded. It's very nice. It's clean. Even a lot better chamf chamfered than a lot more expensive knives, unfortunately. They're making it, all told, very comfortable in the hand. This fits really well. And its size, another great thing about it, provides just so for a four-fingered grip. That swoop right there, right there for your thumb. This was very well thought out as, you know, kind of as, as a workhorse. I, I call it kind of a project EDC. Uh, you got something where you need to go through boxes. This is a great design for that. And that's really the biggest thing here for me is, generally speaking, just the design, man. Uh, this is one of Kershaw's many uh, collaborations with Les George. Uh, very, very prolific designer, I suppose. And this is a great design from him. Uh, great blade, modified sheep's foot, worn cliff, whatever. And one of the coolest things about the blade is there's got to be a... Oh, you see how the blade goes invisible right there? It's, you know, it's uh, stock thickness. It's pretty thin, but, you know, it's not a razor's edge. But you throw this kind of a hollow grind on it, and you can almost not feel the blade by the time you get to the, get to the edge of it. This is a slicing machine. It's incredible. Whatever kind of cardboard box or what have you that you put in front of this thing, it's going through, and it's not going to hesitate on its way. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful blade setup. I love it. One of my favorite blade designs, one of my favorite blade shapes, absolutely wonderful. However, not everything is gold. There's a little bit of garbage. Starting us off on the garbage is unfortunately something that is game breaking for knives that I like very much. And that is the stock pocket clip. Now, I have the pocket clip written as a plus, but that's because I'm forgetful and I forgot that this is not the Spleen's stock pocket clip. This is. You'll notice I switched them because this is garbage. Look at this. Look at how little space that gives you. Look at the horrid, horrid ramp right there. Look at, you're not getting a pocket in there, especially not with round headed screws, which is, as we all know, an incorrect way to do screws. It's not a question of opinion. It's not anything. If your screw heads are round on a fold over pocket clip design, you're incorrect. You're bad at your job. Stop it. But such was the case here. Fortunately, the saving grace is that it's you know, one of Kershaw's most popular pocket clip styles. Just the two screws right there. You know, you got a dividend, throw it on. You got a whatever. Throw it on. You can you can switch and change. I mean, even a even a zero tolerance pocket clip, the screw holes are still the same distance. You can switch them all day long. So it's something that you can very easily fix, and obviously I did. If you have one to switch for it. Going forward, though, is well stuff that matters a little bit more. Not least of which is the materials. So as I've said, this is a budget blade. For the twenty dollars, there's a lot of there's a lot of incredible that you're gonna get here. However, I mean you know, they they still gotta make it hitting that price point. So they take away in some important areas. Blade, you're getting eight CR thirteen MOV. It's not terrible. That's I mean, especially not especially not for the price. But you know it it, it is what it is. You're not getting an S thirty five for twenty bucks. If you are, it's not S thirty five. Uh, the handles; these are stainless steel, which isn't a super, which isn't super a problem. It means that this thing is a little beefcake that you can throw under a tank tread, and it's going to be fine. However, it's a little beefcake; things going to be heavy, right? Uh, you can see here, ought to be around 4.2 ounces. Let it say hello to us. What are we looking at? 4.2 ounces. To compare it to some other popular kind of uh, budget blades, we got Spyderco Tenacious 4.1, K2 
K-Bar Dozier, two. Uh, this is another hefty little beefcake thing here. Cricket Pilar, again, about 4.2. It's a very general thing. To check the dividend, they use aluminum scale, so it's, you know, an ounce and a half lighter. So the price point that they're able to hit with this is great, but there are trade-offs in getting there. Uh, part of it being a stainless steel handle is that this thing is slippery. Uh, it's weird in that it's, uh, well, comparing it to going back to the CRK, to the Cricket Pilar, that, I mean, there's no traction here. One of the... Uh, one of the benefits of having this rigid backspacer, ridged backspacer, is that it's actually kind of the only point of traction in the whole knife. Uh, the butt of the handle that's down here, it's fairly pointed. I believe that that was intentional with the understanding that the handle was going to be slippery so that you can put that in your palm when you flick it because, well, your fingers aren't really going to be able to hold on to anything, right? That's just how this works. And going into that a little bit further, outside of this, this is amazing. But just looking at this, this is boring, right? All this is is one of Kershaw's myriad straight black wash budget blades. And they're a dime a dozen. They're replaceable designs, unfortunately. Kershaw introduces and retires what feels like a, an army's worth of black wash assisted opening small uh small knives you know every other year they're starting to do it less now that they are more comfortable with uh manual operated knives there's uh this is fraction there's concierge there's blah blah, blah. but I mean, that, that was a couple of years ago, but even even this past year, they introduced a couple of more that just Spleen's own family. These knives deserve a little bit more, and Kershaw's capable of doing it. So this is Kershaw Malt, also discontinued. I super don't like this knife. I think it's trash, but you can't argue that the thing's designed, right? It's visually appealing. Uh, let's go... I'm looking over here. Spiderco Shuffle. Spiderco Shuffle. <laughs> I took the thumb screw out. It's got a hole and suddenly my brain tells me it's Spiderco. Kershaw Shuffle. Very, very similar materials. Even a lesser price point. And yet these things are offered in, what, 20 different varieties and, you know, 20 different colors. Incredible stuff. They're capable of designing their knives. If Kershaw cares about something, well, I already showed off the fraction. Again, very similar price point. Uh, a little bit later, so maybe it's an unfair comparison, but only by a couple of years. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's colored. There are, there are a variety of them. It, if Kershaw cares enough about a model, they are perfectly capable of making that model cool. Even, even on the budget offering, this isn't something where you expect too much of a $20 blade. They're capable of doing cool stuff with their budget options. That's for a long time, I lived in Kershaw, and that's why. Because they did cool stuff with their budget blades. But this one, unfortunately, just wasn't hit by, the by you know, any interesting magic. Um, excellent design, excellent design, designed blade not so much in the handle. Uh, going back to the lock bar, <clears throat> I forgot to mention this earlier, but there is plenty of cutout, so that part at least is excellent. Get your thumb in there, no problem. And it is entirely possible that all of the money that would have been spent on CNCing the handle and putting texture and design in there went to chamfering the whole thing, in which case, well, I guess that's a wash. Still not a big fan of the black wash, though. Makes it just seem boring, all right? With all of that said, you know, my final, my final thoughts on this thing is that, honestly, I am sad to see it go. Uh, once Blade HQ and whoever else has it is sold out of their stock, there aren't going to be any more Kershaw spleens in the world, and honestly, that's kind of a sad thing for me. 
this this knife was when you know I purchased it and carried it very extensively several years ago. Uh, there's you know, workout equipment at a, at my place of business that this this was what I had to open up what felt like endless endless boxes and plastic straps and Kurt the spleen's what's got me through. I am sad to see it go. What I am excited about though is the you know Kershaw continuing to push the envelope Kershaw continuing to do cool and interesting things and to bring great designs and pair them with a little bit more interesting design that's honestly where where Kershaw lives for me and and part of, part of what they do best here we have a great design that's simply not paired very well uh, overall, fantastic knife though. I'm a huge fan of it. Uh, after you swap out the pocket clip, it did get, uh, and still does occasionally get a lot of pocket time from me. Uh, Kershaw Splain, it's, it's a good knife. My stamp of approval. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or stories, please let me know down below. Other than that, have a great day.